Welcome back fellow geeks. Now today I want to give you my full review on the filamentive copper filament. This is a really cool filament that filamentive sent over to me and I'm more than happy to test out and post all over social media. But if you haven't seen the posts I've done on Instagram and on Twitter, highly recommend checking those out. Just two seconds and you really will be impressed in some of the cool things you can do with Filamentive's copper fill and the very nice polish. Now, I'm gonna get to how to polish the copper filament and how to have some really nice models in this filament, but first I wanna start off by giving a little bit of background about the filament and giving you the settings. Now, if you're familiar with Filamentive's other composite exotic filaments, you know they all have a base of a PETG, where this one, the copper filament actually has a base of PLA, which does give it slightly different settings and kind of, in my opinion, makes it slightly easier to print with, though it doesn't degrade the filament compared to its PETG counterparts. Now, with that being said, it is still an exotic filament, and this one's actually an 80% metal to a 20% PLA filament, which is actually kind of high for some of the exotic filaments and composites I've printed with in the past and it definitely does show in the models and when you start polishing it that the high percentage of metal really does help but that does have a couple drawbacks and that being if you use a standard brass nozzle on your hot end you're gonna wear that down faster than a normal PE or PLA or even a PETG filament and that being it's more abrasive with the metal so I would recommend using a hardened steel or really any type of hardened nozzle. I use a E3D V6, so it's quite easy for me to get my hands on a hardened nozzle, and it's actually something I recommend for all other exotics, not just this copper fill. So this isn't just something that is a drawback for this particular filament. It's something that you learn is a drawback for most exotics. So I'd highly recommend it still, but I would still recommend looking for a hardened nozzle or if you don't mind changing your nozzle about 75 or 25 percent sooner than normal still go with the brass nozzle it doesn't really affect that much and it, it just slightly makes your nozzle wear down quicker which you can get for three or four dollars online so that might not be a problem to you a very important aspect of 3D printing is the settings you use and by default I use Simplify 3D on my Robo 3D and on all other printers that I encounter because it does work for a range of different printers. So if you're interested in my profile, please feel free to comment below, shoot me an email and I'll be more than happy to send you the profile or answer any questions you may have. Now for the temperature wise. I use 210 degrees Celsius on the hot end and 45 degrees Celsius on the hot bed. Now this is a base PLA so you can slightly tweak your hot bed temperatures and on my Robo 3D it is a glass bed so I used a glue stick just a standard Elmer's glue stick to help adhere it to the bed and I never had a problem with adhesion. Now it is a base PLA and I know many people have different um, preferences on how they like to adhere their PLA prints to their bed, whatever it is, whether glass or whatever it may be. So I highly recommend you giving your preferred adhesion method a try before you kind of stepped out, just so you can see exactly what you want to do. Now, another important aspect is the print speed. And there's a few things that can contribute to the speed that you set your printer at. Now, as just a kind of base, I did all of this on my Robo 3D with a 0.4 hardened nozzle with a V6, E3D V6 hot end. So I kind of kept that as a standard, so there's really no flux in that. And with that being said, I did run it models with different complexities and different settings. And so I did find a range of print speeds that work best. Now I found something around the 40 millimeters a second. It really depends on your print speed and your nozzle. I would recommend a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Now, most of my prints are either 150 microns or 200, as you can see. So your layers and your walls and your bottom is gonna have a small range. Now, with 150 microns, 
I prefer, prefer doing six layers, top, sides, bottom, just as kind of a standard so there's no mistake and you don't get to the very end of the print and you have a wall that isn't completely solid or it looks terrible and ruins the whole thing. Now this is something that I would recommend you checking out. I preferred with six because over different filaments at 150 microns, I have found that that is my kind of my sweet spot. So that is what I've used. If you don't want to step out on your first print or you're looking for a good base to start, I'd recommend somewhere between five and six. It's kind of safe and you don't use too much more filament. Now for the infill, I use 25% and this does have a small adjustment with the shells that you use. And so this is with the six shells on the sides, top and bottom along with the 25% infill. And that is the standard infill hatch pattern that Simplify 3D has. And I know some have different settings and different patterns, but this is the pattern I decided to go with as is the standard. Now, as with all PLAs, I would recommend an active cooling fan, which the Robo 3D has. Now, this is something that if you have your own preferred settings for PLA and active cooling, I would highly recommend you sticking with those as you know what works best for your machine and the environment your machine's in. If you're not too sure about that, here's my settings and what I would recommend and what really works best with me. And I do know they do range a little bit. So if you're looking at these settings as your base, I really only look at them as your base and I wouldn't take them verbatim and I kind of tinker a little bit with it find out what works perfect for you. As I do highly recommend using active cooling on this copper filament. It really worked for me. And there's some models that didn't turn out quite right with a little bit of bridging when I didn't use active cooling. So I'd highly recommend checking that out in your settings, whether Simplify, Cura, Repetier. Now on to finishing your models. Now this is something I've had quite a few people ask me about. I have quite a few little tricks and things you can definitely try. I recommend finishing your model with sandpaper. Now some more complex models that can be more of a trick because you can't exactly get the sandpaper or the right pressure into some areas. And some other models are quite easy and kind of all these different finishing techniques require a small, a slight touch and a little bit of training and tinkering before you find exactly what you're looking for and know exactly how to do it. So I'd recommend trying something like a 150% scale Marvin from 3D Hubs for example or something that has some flat surfaces, maybe a little bit of curves so you can try it out. Now sandpaper wise, I depending on my layer height, depends on where I start. Somewhere either 80 grit or 150 grit. Now I went with 150 grit with this Marvin as he was printed with 150 microns. Now as you kind of only use it to knock down your thick layer um, heights and the ridges that it creates, you want to transition over to a 220 grit sandpaper. And then as you kind of knock those down and you make small and smaller and smaller scratches, you kind of want to bounce up to 400. Now, as you're doing this, your model is going to turn almost white. And that has a little bit to do with the PLA in it. And it still is a PLA at 20% of its entire filament. So you do have to keep that in mind. But as you start to go up to your wet and dry 800 and your wet and dry 2000, that white fogginess starts to go away until you start to have a really nice shine. And that's something you definitely see when you're sanding it as you start to have that little speckle start popping through the very cloudy, rough, sanded, scratched up surface. And that's when you know you want to move up to your 800. And then once you start to see those little speckles, you want to move up to your 2000. Now for those two, I recommend a wet and dry sandpaper. That's why I found works best for me. All these sandpapers you can find at your local home improvement store. I found these at my local home, local home Depot. I know they sell them at Ace and they sell them at Lowe's. And if you know somewhere that might sell something over 2000, maybe give that a try. That's not something I could find locally in my area and requires a little bit extra expense to get 
shipped over to me. So I haven't really tried past 2000, but you can still get some really nice finished models if you stop at 2000. Now, the reason I say you can stop at 2000 is I also had a small bit of copper polish, which you can still find at any of your home improvement stores. And what I did here is got the Dremel kit for polishing, but I did not use a Dremel, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a second. Instead, I used the small Dremel brush and the polishing agent and applied that with a cordless drill. Now with that, I turned the settings all the way down on my cordless drill, so it really was just slowly rotating the polishing head and it wasn't creating too much heat. Now, one thing you do wanna make sure you watch out is the heat, and this is why I don't recommend using a Dremel. Now, I tried to do the same thing with the previous Marvin with a Dremel, and I started to burn holes into it even on my lowest Dremel setting. So, if you're really not familiar, like myself, with using a Dremel to polish, I highly recommend staying away from that now. Unless you'd like to experiment, which I am all for. Always important to experiment when you're trying new things. So, I kind of take that story and maybe start with a cordless drill or even maybe just a rag and some copper polish as that worked perfectly fine for me on a separate model I did after I was trying to recover from my first Marvin I destroyed. Now, there is another way that you can po uh, polish metal prints and that is with a tumbler. Now, if you are familiar with tumbling parts or casings or anything, it is a very, very slow process and that is actually something I will get back on a later date. I have some really cool models, or Marvins actually, that have been tumbled. As it is a very slow process, I wasn't able to have them for this video. But they will definitely be posted soon. And I want to thank uh, Calvin, the machinist, for doing this for me. As it really means a lot to have something so cool like that done. Thank you. As a recap of the filament of copper filament, there's a couple things to keep in mind. A, always make sure you're using the right settings because this can jam. It's a PLA, and like any filament, if you use the wrong settings, the heat's too high, moving too slow, something along those lines, you will get a jam and your print won't turn out nice. And this is a great filament, so you want to make sure your settings are always set perfectly. Second, you want to make sure you take into account the abrasiveness of the filament. It is a metal composite and not a pure plastic filament, so it will um, degrade your hot end nozzle faster than your standard plastics, your PLAs, and your ABSs. So that's something to definitely keep in mind. And if you have a changeable nozzle, maybe getting a hardened nozzle instead of the standard brass. Different companies sell them in different sizes. Another thing I would recommend is sticking with something around a 4.4 millimeter nozzle. You can go down to a 3 and you can go up, but preferably for me, I found 0.4 works perfect. Now, if you're polishing, do what you know best. And if you don't, if you haven't tried polishing yet, I highly recommend using sandpaper and slowly sanding the lines away. The final goal is to get all of your layer heights all the way out. And it does take a little more time, but not as much time as a tumbler at about 24 hours a model. So if you have any questions or you have any recommendations for future videos, please feel free to comment below. If you're interested in the Simplify profile, again, please feel free to comment, shoot me an email. I'm always looking out for different questions and always try to respond as quickly as I can to different questions or problems that arise from my subscribers. And really enjoy the comments I receive. If you've liked this video, please feel free to comment, like, and subscribe. It really does help me out and it helps me know what I should gear my videos towards in the future. Now if you have any recommendations for future videos, please feel free to shoot me an email. I always love the recommendations. Now my final thank you goes to Raviat Filament for sending me this copper filament. Sorry it took slightly longer to make the video, but I really did enjoy the filament. And if you're interested in buying filament of filament, Always remember to use Chris Brown 15 at checkout for 15% off your entire cart. 
really great filament. I'd highly recommend checking out their entire line. They have some really nice filament I've never had a problem with, and you can see all of my videos and reviews about them below. Highly recommend checking them out. Check them out on social media and their links up beside me and down below in the comments and check me out on social media. Highly recommend it. You won't be disappointed. Thank you.